Right, I'd like to talk about culture in the world of Elite Dangerous and how that plugs into all the different aspects of the game and why some of the things in the game are the way they are. So I'll start off about, you know, you're a pilot in the game, you've got your ship, and I'm sure people have noticed, especially as it's sort of clearer now, now we've got the, um, the faces in, um, since 2.1, the people that you interact with, that actually they're a bit cool towards you. You know, that they, the, the standard, what we call the neutral stance, is actually slightly negative. And the, the logic for that is, um, if you imagine a, a, a gigantic galaxy full of people who are traveling around, quite a lot of players don't stay in one place all the time. They tend to travel around a lot. They're quite itinerant. <clears throat> and if you think back to the history of Earth, you know, for example, through the Middle Ages and later, generally itinerant populations are strongly disliked by the locals. And that's because there's almost no accountability. So if people are only here for a while and then move on, there is an assumption they can get away with anything. So the, under the assumption is that pilots, that the default assumption with pilots, if they don't recognize them, is that they're up to no good. You know, they're traveling around. In fact, it's already in the, the you know, that, you know, we've talked about the different, you know, piracy being a key, one of the key things that players can engage in. Um, which isn't exactly necessarily a respectable profession. I mean, yes, we, we um, look at Robin Hood and all this sort of thing, but actually, historically, pir pirates have generally been after themselves. You know, the, the um, cuddly, friendly attitude of Pirates of the Caribbean, I think it wasn't quite like that. You know, they were killing each other in gruesome ways, rather horribly. But anyway, to, to come back to, um, to Elite Dangerous, I think the key thing is that there is that sort of level of distrust. So I'm just really explaining the background, why people are cool and standoffish until they've seen you two, three, four, five times, where they'll welcome you back. They will start to give you more missions that they're going to trust you for, if you see what I mean, like, hey, take this here, and all, you know, that, that things of higher value and things with bigger rewards. And so that's the sort of the background behind the, the reasoning behind why the system is the way they are. Basically, it's a, a, a not, it's a, an understandable distrust of itinerant populations that we've seen through history. And that's not reflecting at all necessarily on that population. It's just the way people are, the way we have been brought up culturally. So the, 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 the premise behind the empire in Elite Dangerous is essentially a glorified Oregon Trail type wagon train headed off um, n nearly a millennium ago uh, and went as far as they possibly could and then chose this gorgeous planet to settle on which had life on it which they promptly knocked out <laughs> I mean intelligent life um, that's in this, but, but then they settled there and that came out later and there was lots of controversy but the point is with, with that sort of thing is how would that pan out would people in that frame of mind seeing somewhere wonderful to settle they would take it you know, in, in many, you know, if you, if you look at the friction between um, the Native American uh, Indians and the settlers coming in, but, the, you know, the Native Americans basically got ousted by better technology. And I'm sure that will happen in, um, in what is effectively our future. If we met other, other sentient life that was less technologically advanced than us. So anyway, the, the point is that they would want to set up a society that was very different to what they've run away from. And patronage actually naturally emerges from a sort of a family-based or a, a system where there's relatively little, uh, little governance, but then be could become formalized like it was in Roman times, uh, where there, is, there are responsibilities both ways, where you don't have, you know, there's, there's lots and lots of background behind it uh, within the game that will gradually come out more and more in time. We're just seeing very much the, the, the top level. But where each strata in society has a formal way of getting into that position, where essentially a, um, someone called a patron uh, has a number of uh, citizens below them and those sort of vote for that patron it's essentially by sort of slinging their hook with them and then similarly that goes all the way up to the senators who in turn um, form a senate 
which controls the way the empire works, led by the emperor. And so you don't have voting, you don't have elections, but what people can do is if they don't like what a particular senator's doing, they can say, oh, right, I'm now backing this other senator. And so, like in Roman times, senators could lose support really quickly for some, um, some sort of behaviour that people don't like. Now, unfortunately, what happened in Roman times and is happening in our empire now is one of the most successful things senators did was start wars because it raised a lot of money and it meant they didn't have to raise taxes. Because the other thing is when you sling your hook with a particular senator, you pay tax to them at the rate they determine. Now, a senator that's going and raising money by fighting wars and stealing stuff doesn't have to raise any taxes at all. And in fact, can bring loads of benefits to those people that support them. Now, you know, something similar happened in Roman times and it's not desperately healthy because it encourages more and more wars. Uh, but it's the way senators typically got popular, and it's very disruptive to the long-term stability of their society. So looking at, uh, at the sort of the whole wider environment, you know, that um, you think, you know, what, how are people living in uh, 3302? And, uh, you know, you've got this stratified society, and the players are essentially right at the top of it. They can afford to get around. They can afford to travel. And I think in a, um, I mean, we see it today, but I think in a galaxy that's hugely varied, where there are lots of different places, people can find somewhere, I'm sure, that they, that they may well be happy. You look at some of the idealists in the game, look at um, the utopia, one of the powers, you know, that, that you'll see these um, sort of, if you like, pressures for people to move. So travel would be a big deal. And we're seeing that with passengers coming um, in 2.2 in and all of the driving forces behind it. And we want to try and reveal as much as that as possible so that when we see um, uh, systems becoming destabilized, we'll see refugees coming from it. You can take those passengers away who want to leave because there are problems there. And you see, you start to see the um, sort of more of the background. It's in the background simulation already. More of that coming to the fore. More of that being visible from a player's point of view. And I think that that to me is very exciting. You know that we've we've also um, we've trying to sort of visualise what's happening in the back. We've got space lanes are now in there uh, that people can see. But doing more and more with that and making the what's happening in the game much more visible to people. So <clears throat> there's another aspect to this, which is very sort of uh, front and central to the um, gameplay anyway. You look at something like um, an Imperial warship, you know, it's a great big ship, but you, you start to see some of the stratification there. You know, if you imagine you're a Marine or, a, 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 you know, essentially what we might call a grunt soldier, you're going to have a little grey cabin probably with four or six bunks in it um, and some metal tin that you eat your food out of and some despicable smelling place that you do your business in. Whereas you see um, the back top end of the ship, this uh, toroidal um, sort of cylindrical thing that rotates, which will have gravity inside it. Um, you, you probably, for those who read the Galnet post, will talk about uh, the people where that, that might be full of trees or, you know, utter, utter, utter luxury. Um, gravity itself is quite, will be quite a luxury in space, you know, rather than just using magnetic boots or whatever. Um, we have it in the stations. So, for example, in the stations, we've, we've seen the, um, the Orbis stations, which obviously with the, the rings that you see out, you can see from out into space, but also um, designs for the inside, the interior of the Coriolis, where you've got the cylinder in the middle where you land, where you've got about 0.1 gravity, so gravity is quite low. But then outside that, you've got the sort of the boxy shape. Now inside that, um, we've got stepped terracing, so that you've got a giant open volume, because these things, the density isn't all that high, and but volume isn't expensive thing. I mean, yes, it's filled with air, but that's not all that heavy. So you would have the feeling of open space. You would have the, um, one of the premises of the, ga the game, which I th don't think is unreasonable at all, is that power is very cheap. We've got nuclear fusion, because otherwise you wouldn't be able to travel the vast distances you do. Um, so you could have things that feel like natural light, and you'd have a day-night cycle internally that, that light the, the thing up. But Terracing is a natural thing that we like because it gives a feeling of space without everyone feeling they're living on top of each other. 
But beneath that, you have this warren of where the people that serve these upper layers of society live and probably get a bit cheesed off with the way they're treated. <laughs> Hence, we have uprisings and all this sort of thing. It's where the gameplay meets things that you can sort of empathise with, the, the, the feeling of, of, of real life, if you like.